Fora TV. The world is thinking. So a lot of people ask me, how does a hairdresser wind up in Afghanistan? <laughs> I still ask myself that, you know, I mean, it's like I say, when I see my customers, I'm like, this is true disaster relief with <laughs> some of their hair, you know, <laughs> the Kabul weather doesn't do us any favors. But I, a hairdresser for all my life, my mother's a hairdresser, my ex-husband's a hairdresser, my son's a hairdresser, it's in my blood, it's what I know how to do. But I was getting a bit kind of bored, wanted to do more things, so I started doing what I called vacation with a purpose. So I trained with the disaster relief team, and I went, um, it was August 2001, and after I trained, about two weeks later, 9-11 happened. So the first thing that I was deployed to was Ground Zero. After my experience at Ground Zero, Zero I worked with the firefighters. Um, I was in an exceptionally abusive marriage for five years, and when I came home, all I could see was Taliban, Taliban, Taliban. On the TV, 24 hours a day, all I could see were these women. And I st still gives me goosebumps when I thought about those women being driven into the stadium. We all saw it on TV. And the gun pointed at their head for, for some reason, you know what, they say it takes uh, two witnesses for man, for anybody to be committed, you know, commit be, uh, for adultery. Somehow, you know, the men never seem to get these witnesses, but the women do. I have no idea how that works, but they're always, and they were killing them for such crimes. And I, my heart was dying inside. I felt like I was being in my own small oppressed situation in an abusive marriage. Um, it was horrible. I wanted out more than anything, and I was having a hard time getting out. And I thought, these women, how they must feel five years. They couldn't go to school. They couldn't leave their house. They couldn't get medical treatment. They would put a hole in a, in a curtain, and the doctor would peer through. The, they couldn't, and they're in a burqa. They were dying by the day because no medical treatment. So I thought, I've got to go. I mean, it's like the, I just knew that that's where I'm supposed to be. So I raised money any way I could. I begged the team, please, please, please let me go. They were doctors. They were dentists. They were, like, really educated, important people. And I was the hairdresser thinking, they're like, Deb, you know, we really don't need a hairdresser on the team. I says, yes, you really do. Have you looked at your hair? <laughs> and so they relented finally and said, if you can raise the money, and at that time it was like $5,000, we'll let you go. And I, my customers baked brownies and cookies, and I sold them outside of Sam's Club in order to raise the money.